this lesson, we will consider Article 6 and the due process. What is meant by Article 6 is the right to a fair trial. Now, it's interesting to note that before the enactment of the Human Rights Act of 1998, citizens within the UK had no remedy in terms of a human rights violation. The only redress they had was through the ECHR, or the European Court of Human Rights. And whatever matter that they took up in the ECHR was in fact one against state and not an individual. For instance, it would be John versus UK. Conversely, matters against state itself by another state was also possible in the event that both parties were in fact signatories of the ECHR or the European Convention on Human Rights. Now mind you, we have been discussing primarily within the context of the English legal system about procedural law rather than substantive law and this is a sole example, a good example of where this particular topic as in the Article 6 and the due process applies directly to procedural law itself and not that of substantive law. There are several considerations that must be made when we discuss Article 6 and its applicability within the UK and to our specific topic itself. Article 6 does not provide any individual with a right to appeal. But when that appeal or the right to an appeal has been received by an individual, Article 6 applies to that appeal. Now, the concept of a jury is something not alien to most of us in many different jurisdictions. But in terms of Article 6 itself of the ECHR, courts have a puzzling quandary. When you consider the jury itself, it's a body that meets in secret and provides no justification of its verdict. Therefore, in terms of Article 6 and the due process itself, there is no due process which is transparent and open. Therefore, there is a conflict between Section 8 of the Contempt of Court Act itself and Article 6 of the ECHR. The entire premise of Article 6 and the due process means that everything must be open so as to allow the individual to understand that there is a process in place in which justice will prevail and there is fair trial. Now, this applies to pretty much every single arm um, procedurally of the court structure of not only the UK but of many other jurisdictions as well. Finally, let's have a brief look at how exactly substantive law and procedural rights connect with each other. Firstly, the breach must occur in terms of a substantive law. When there has been a breach of this nature, it acts as a trigger which in turn activates whatever the procedural rights that a person has. For instance, Article 6, the right to a fair trial. That was a brief overview of Article 6 and the due process and how the European Communities Act of 1972, which brought the UK within the purview of the EU, has affected the UK's dualist infrastructure in which it has affected how exactly court processes take place in the 21st century. In the next lesson, we will look at what can be considered as the pivotal remit of that ascension into the EU, which is the Human Rights Act of 1998.